So I'm here on Highland with Dr. Augustinius Loud. He is a adjunct associate professor and a senior consultant in the National Healthcare Group Eye Institute at Ten Tuck Seng Hospital in Singapore, with clinical and research interests in cataract, macular diseases, and low vision. And you'll notice here I'm reading because Dr. Loud was in our recent cover story of Pi Magazine. Uh, we appreciate him coming to Pi Land, which we have flown to, land of uh, the mysterious retina creatures. Uh, thanks for being us with us here, uh, Gus. It's a appreciate pleasure. It. Great. So, Gus, um, you know, earlier today we were talking a little bit here at Arvo uh, how you used to do a little bit more research with OCT. And I thought it was interesting because you were explaining at that time, you know, it was sort of we were transitioning in sort of the early 2000s from time domain OCT to spectral domain OCT. And now again, we're sort of at a transition point um, from spectral domain OCT to, you know, SSOCT or subsource OCT, which is, you know, somewhere between now and in the future. Um, so can, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with, you know, what time domain versus spectral domain was back in the day? Sure, Matt. Um, thank you. Um, I remember um, being fascinated by the images that was generated by the time domain OCT. Mm. Um, but then again, of course, when the uh, subsequent spectral domain OCT started churning out the beautiful images, uh, it was uh, very uh, impressive. Mm. Um, certainly, it helped a lot in our clinical diagnosis and decision making. Uh, to make better choices for our patients. So uh, the transition from the time domain to the uh, Fourier domain or the spectral domain OCT was uh, very natural because um, it's, the change is very obvious. You just get much better quality images and you can see better resolution and that gives us more information about the patient. So um, the acquisition of the images didn't really change that much yeah. um, and there were very few tweaks that we need to do in order to acquire the images so the transition was a very natural one I would say and uh, the benefit is uh, very clear both for the patients and also for the clinicians hmm. and you said that nowadays although your research interests have kind of gone elsewhere you think that it's it's not as clear-cut between where we are today with spectral domain OCT and where the future of OCT lies is yeah. that right? Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting because um, certainly we can uh, appreciate the, the uh, swept source OCT, especially the OCT angiography, um, is a very exciting uh, new development in uh, acquiring images from our patients. Yeah. Um, however, I think the main issue is there is still a lot of uncertainties. Part of the reason is because of the uh, variability uh, in terms of the type of image acquired, which um, segmentation is uh, the images uh, showing, uh, which slab it is showing, and also there are some uncertainties about what is it that we are actually seeing in the images that are acquired. Mm. Um, let me explain, um, because uh, for the OCT and geography, uh, the image are acquired by the movements of the red blood cells in the blood vessels. Yeah. But we also are aware that if the blood vessels travel too fast, the image may not be acquired. And if the blood vessels travel too slowly, uh, the image may not be captured. Mm. So when we see a blood vessel image that is generated and then disappear, um, it's may be difficult to interpret whether is that because of lack of flow or whether it's the difficulty in the image acquisition. Mm. So that can lead to some uncertainties about what we are actually seeing. Um, with our human minds, we are very keen to fill the blanks, fill in the blanks. So we often try to uh, interpret by thinking what is plausible, but that is slightly different from what is the reality. So 
what we think we are seeing may not be what it is showing. So that I think can generate some uh, uncertainty and that may uh, give some hesitancy to our uh, ability to fully utilize this tool in our clinical day-to-day -day practice. Interesting. Well, in this day and age, another uh, innovation that people often speak about is OCTA. Mm. And I remember earlier uh, at this meeting at Arvo, someone had mentioned that at Orbis, which I believe is sort of like a charitable uh, group, uh, they sometimes fly to Vietnam, which is a country where I live, and they do, you know, uh, diagnostics right there on the plane. Mm. And what they use is OCTA yeah. because it's just much more convenient to do so. Yeah. So it seems like that's a particular innovation which uh, has certainly helped out uh, the world. Mm. Um, can you speak to why OCTA, for example, might be so useful on, on a plane flying into Vietnam to do diagnostics on uh, the population there? Yeah, so I think OCTA does bring with it a host of uh, advantages that perhaps an, an uh, over and traditional angiography done with a fluorescent or with the in green. Yeah. Um, and uh, the big advantage is number one, the speed of image acquisition. So you can complete the OCTA image acquisitions in much shorter time than in a traditional angiography. Sure. The other big advantage, of course, is that it's a non-invasive procedure and it doesn't involve injecting any medications into the patient. So it's a much safer and uh, less invasive procedure. Um, and certainly for a service, a mobile service such as Orbis, to be able to acquire the images in the shortest time, in the safest way, is a tremendous advantage. But again, similar to what I mentioned earlier, some of the there are some limitations associated with OCT and geography, mm. um, and principally that uh, associated with um, trying to interpret what we are seeing on the acquired images, and whether or not um, they represent the pathology that we think that we are seeing. Interesting. Well, we had another speaker here on Pylan. Uh, that was talking about artificial intelligence and OCT. And I know that's sort of your field, at least the artificial intelligence part, and how that can be used to uh, sort of become aware of, of disease progression at an early state. So can you talk a little bit about our artificial intelligence and what that might bring to OCT? Um, yeah, so artificial intelligence, it seems to be the buzzword today and um, there's a lot of applications that we are being explored. Um, it is a very powerful tool um, uh, and it is possible to find some applications within the field of OCTA as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that links to the some of the reservations that I mentioned early about our uncertainty about interpreting the images that are quite in OCTA. So one of the potential applications of artificial intelligence would be to train an algorithm to be able to classify uh, the acquired images into disease or non-disease states. Mm. And in the disease states, you can further subclassify into different categories. But the aim is still the same, to be able to rapidly uh, process an acquired image in order to arrive at a diagnosis whether it's a normal image or whether it's an abnormal image. So I think the value of artificial intelligence lies in being able to process the acquired image in a rapid fashion and to be able to classify the image into uh, however many categories that you want. So I think there may be some potential uh, for application of AI in this. That's great. And I suppose uh, uh, portability would come into play there. And, and we've seen, for example, in the recent uh, AIOS conference in Coimbatore, India, that there were different manufacturers, uh, one Zeiss, another Remedio, that, that is working on screening capabilities um, you know, for large populations 
uh, but I suppose eventually that would have an AI component so that we can you know, prevent uh, things going on in, in remote areas even. Absolutely. So when you mention portability, uh, particularly if you're thinking about orbits, um, you can even cut down on manpower. So if you want to do um, traditional angiography, you need manpower to set up the intravenous lines and you need to have trained people to resuscitate in case of anaphylaxis mm. reactions. Uh, whereas if you take an OCTA image, it's, it's just taking a photo or scanning the eye. So sure. definitely you can cut down not only on the equipment, but also on the manpower as well. That's great. And you know, maybe just to end here, uh, Gus, could you tell us a little bit also just if you can give us any historical perspective on OCT and how it came about and how long it's been around because obviously you know we're talking about the modern era here with spectral domain uh, OCTA and also swept source but you know what is the OCT history like and how far does it go back? That's an interesting question, uh, especially when you ask it in the context of an AVO conference. Yeah. Because uh, a number of years ago, and I can't remember exactly, maybe three years ago, uh, one of the awardees in the AVO was the inventors of OCT. Mm, I see. So they acknowledged the uh, invest inventors of uh, OCT, including David Huang and uh, other collaborators. And um, so I think the history of OCT is um, very well appreciated in the context of ophthalmologists and also engineers working in the field of ophthalmology mm. and uh, that's why they honor it in the ARVO which is the biggest conference in eye related research. Um, but uh, the more exciting aspect of OCT development, in my mind, is how rapidly the field is progressing. Mm. So as you've alluded to earlier on, uh, there was a transition from the time domain to the spectral domain and now to swept source with the possibilities of doing angiography using OCT. So I think the field is growing very rapidly and I think certainly we look forward to uh, further developments in order to be able to use this as a tool to help our practice. That's great. And yes, I, I think that there are innovations abuzz here at Arvo and OCT. And uh, as you mentioned, historically things have happened here and they continue to do so. So we uh, appreciate Arvo for hosting this, uh, this uh, session or, or this event here in Hawaii. Um, and appreciate you being here today, Gus. Thank you, Matt. Highland. <laughs> Lovely. Very good. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you.